Greetings World Walkers, Fyoth here and today I am bringing you the build focusing on the quirkiest gun to get in the game that is the Anguish. The Anguish is an interesting beast. On paper what it does doesn't seem to be particularly effective. Recently though the summoner got a huge buff when it comes to explosive damage. And I was thinking this thing is already a strange beast as it is, why don't we make a strange build to go along with it? Some of the things on this build are not exactly set in stone when it comes to what could be used in order to optimize its effectiveness, but throughout the explanation I will be suggesting alternatives in order to bring it closer to something that you would want to use. Let's get into the meat and potatoes and see how this thing operates. Star of the show is the Anguish, a gun that you get by doing some really backwards things in the game. There are videos out there explaining acquisition, so I'm not gonna get into that matter. What I want you to take away from this is that we will be using feedback, an internal component of how this build will operate. So it is Anguish with feedback plus 10 hands down. Now our primary is an interesting duck. What do I mean about that? It's a corrupted arbalest, but in reality this is just another way to get damage out. Gameplay I will be showing proves that your best bet when using this build is for the enemy to be slowed or immobile and that is because explosive damage of the radius we're going for is gonna kill you as often as it's gonna kill the enemy. If you play co-op it's gonna kill your allies as often as it's gonna kill the enemy. So the Arbalest plus 10 corrupted version is another way to get out a lot of damage. What could replace it, you ask? Literally any weapon capable of regenerating its mod power fast and doesn't have a stock mod. Meaning, for example, the Chicago typewriter with Stasis Beam and Time Weeb can be an exceptionally effective tool when it comes to stopping enemies in their tracks and unloading with the anguish. It is not the only choice, but I had to keep it thematic to an extent, and the name of the game for this build is Explosions. So Corrupted Albalest is my go-to when it comes to getting a lot of explosive damage out there, but if you want utility for your build, the Chicago Typewriter is a good choice, alongside pretty much every fast mod recovering weapon. Our melee is the Red Doe Staff, and I know this seems totally bonkers. Why did I go with this thing? Since we will be using the Summoner to bring in a river, there has to be some way to heal it, right? Because the river, when throws its projectile, is also causing explosive damage. So to keep it really close to the initial idea, I thought I'll bring the Red Doe Staff, use Latency to shorten the requirement for recasting its special and then I'm gonna unleash this thing in a straight line where the river is standing and heal it for the amount allowed. It is not gonna be a game changer and I do not recommend you're too dogmatic about it. Can be interesting, can get certain things done, it is a weapon that's often overlooked because of its low damage potential and you can totally replace it with whatever you feel like. Gonna go for Spectral Blade, gonna go for World's Edge. Everything that you deem appropriate in order to defeat the enemy can be utilized here. This however deals decent damage and can indeed heal allies and your summon pretty effectively if you place it correctly. Don't forget that you can charge it easily in certain instances, let's say in the kiln by just smashing the burned remains of the inhabitants, they also count as damage sources, so you'll have it pretty much all the time. If you don't like it, don't bother. If you want to use something that is more thematic than your average pick, go for it. Our amulet is the neck bone necklace, reduces the damage of status effects applied on the wearer by 50%, gain 25% increased damage when suffering from a status or blight effect. This is pretty huge, it's 25% on par with the damage bonus you get by an archetype in this game. On the downside, you have to be suffering from something. And we're gonna get into this right now. Building on this notion of suffering from something, we have the alchemy stone, increases base life still by 6% while suffering from a negative status or blight effect, building on the suffering even further, 
hardcore metal band taking damage as one stack of bulwark for 10 seconds max 5 stacks that means that you will max this out automatically as soon as you go into the game with this build and, and here is what ties it all together the atonement fault sent it flicks bleeding status upon the wearer causing 1.1 bleed damage per second increases critical chance by 10% what this does is you continuously bleed you get 5 stacks of bulwark that is approximately 27% damage reduction and all the effects from the aforementioned pieces of equipment because you have this little sucker on. It is not my favorite ring because it cuts down your healing and we will do something to balance it out. Follow my train of thought and see where it takes you. Probability Cord is our last ring, increases crit damage by 30%, 30% critical damage on a build that can get pretty consistent criticals is pretty awesome. Our archetypes is Archon with Chaos Gate and Summoner with the Reaver and here are our traits which you can pause to grab them from here and I'm gonna explain certain things that I am picking and others that I am not. We want last caster because it will tie everything together, the casting of our mods, of our class skills and of course the summon. Then we want regrowth to combat the bleed, we're gonna strengthen it even further with a couple more choices. Vigor, Endurance, Self-Explanatory, Spirit is gonna help us tremendously with the reactivation of the mods and believe it or not this is a very mod intensive build. Amplitude, 10 points, Bark Skin for damage reduction, fitness 10 points footwork 5 recovery 5 rugged 10 and siphoner 10 if you want to have any chance of surviving your own mess with this build you will need kinship are you gonna be playing co-op with this thing take kinship are you gonna be drunk when playing with this build so you won't be able to gauge your distance from the enemy well enough use kinship kinship is a very potent trade when it comes to not damaging your allies reducing damage by up to 80 percent for the purposes of this vid and this build i'm gonna try to optimize the damage and quirkiness of it if you want to make it safer take five or five points out of a couple of your traits and put them into kinship taking five points out of amplitude for starters is gonna help you because the explosions will not cause as much of a mess that means it won't kill as many enemies per shot, but again, it won't kill you either. For our heart, I'm using the Tranquil with Mythic Ranged Critical, Mythic Ranged Damage on Critical and Mythic Fire Rate. The fragments are pretty solid when it comes to what they're gonna do for the build. The heart itself is not exactly a requirement. I use the Tranquil Heart a lot because I love the way it heals you. I have a ton of life still on this build, passive regeneration from regrowth that pretty much nullifies and overtakes the bleeding and with this I'm getting a constant stream of healing whilst I'm just doing whatever. If you wanna have instant healing despite the bleeding, I would go for enlarged heart. It is gross, it cuts your usage in half, but it is extremely potent. Use whichever fits your needs. If you can manage with 5 heal that's great, if you feel like you're gonna help yourself more by just having passive regeneration, stick to the tranquil. When all is said and done with the 5 bulwark charges that we're getting, we will be looking at a total damage reduction of 58.5. Now pay close attention my friend, this will not save your ass on apocalypse but it will trivialize most situations up to nightmare. For Apocalypse, I suggest you drink a meat shake that will give you an additional 8% damage reduction, making you somewhat more survivable, but if you activate Chaos Gate, be prepared for a lot of hearth. This is not a tanky build, it is a build for general traversal and clearing out hordes of enemies and elites, so you take the good with the bad and you have to be swift on your feet and effective with your evades, or you're gonna be a very sad person indeed. So what do you wanna do to actually operate this thing? You can have a summon, of course, it will traverse with you and you can heal it and you can use it for extra damage. But when it comes to you yourself, what you wanna be doing is as follows. Activate the mod of the anguish and then activate chaos gate, aim and unleash hell. You're gonna get insane crit chance and for every bullet that you fire, no matter what kind of damage it does, 
you will be able to get an explosion that will also crit as soon as you deplete this you have it back you don't have to wait at all that also means that you don't have to ever pick up ammo the ability does not use ammo it just uses the mod energy so you keep firing and once it runs out you reactivate it and keep going this is a combination of the archons mod regeneration and the traits we put on slap this thing together and watch them go boom so this is it world walkers my volatile anguish build hope you found it interesting and quirky not every build needs to be the world ender that some of my other builds were but you want to find them you can watch them right here sub like and hit the notification bell and until next time be well stay frosty and always travel perfection cheers